Understanding quantum superposition involves understanding what normal wave superposition is. Supposing I have two waves of the same type and I line them up peak to peak, trough to trough. They meet at some point in space and they add up to create a constructive superposition. Let's say I take those same two waves, but I line them up peak to trough, trough to peak. When they meet in space and add up, they cancel each other out. This is a destructive superposition. These are the simplest forms of superposition. This leads us to the principle of superposition, which tells us that when two waves of the same type meet at some point in space, the resultant wave has a displacement that is equal to the total sum of displacements due to each individual waves. It's basically adding up the waves wherever they meet in space. Notice the moving image. We get successive constructive and destructive superpositions based upon how the two waves are lined up, whether they are peak to peak, trough to trough. An easy way to visualize what a wave is, is to stand at the edge of a lake, a calm still lake, and to chuck a large rock into it. This large rock carries kinetic energy and will dump this kinetic energy into the lake, upsetting it and creating turmoil in the lake. At the point of impact where the kinetic energy is dumped, water waves will be created and will spread outwards, carrying this energy away from the point of impact to another point in space. Notice how the water waves are displacing the water i.e. the medium in which it's travelling in. This is how you see the physical representation of the ripples because of the displacement of the water. So if we write a definition of what a wave is, it would say that a wave is, is a disturbance that propagates through a medium carrying energy from point A to point B. There are several quantities which uh, help describe what a wave is, such as the amplitude, which is the maximum displacement of the wave, the wave's propagation speed, the wavelength or time period which describes how a wave repeats itself in time and space, and the phase difference between two waves of the same type. Typical wave behaviours are reflection, refraction and diffraction, which basically describes the, be the behaviour of waves on solid objects and of course, superposition. Building on from normal wave superposition, quantum superposition follows the same principles in that any two or more quantum states can be added together and the result will be another valid quantum state. Conversely, every quantum state can be represented as a sum of two or more other states such as the electron orbitals in the hydrogen atom where the higher energy orbitals become less discrete and will superimpose to create these complex patterns that you see. So quantum particle was mentioned but we haven't talked about exactly what a quantum particle is. So we need to change the way we look at matter and that involves introducing this concept called wave-particle duality. Particles classically have these following properties. First and foremost, they occupy single point locations in space, but most importantly, they transfer energy instantaneously in collisions. Waves on the other hand are a bit more nuanced in that they can't be ascribed to a single point location but are spread around across space. They bend around objects, they diffract, they reflect, they superimpose and the energy that they transferred is done so continuously over a period of time. So if we add these properties together, we get wave-particle duality of which the quantum particle is the illustration of that behaviour. Waves behaving like particles, uh, light is the classical example in which it no longer transfers energy continuously but does so in packets, quantized packets. On the particle side, every piece of matter has wave-like properties but most especially electrons due to their behavior in electron orbitals and the experimental electron diffraction. 
if we consider this video we shoot particles through some slits those that hit the boundaries will get blocked but those that don't will go through and we get a messy random pattern on the screen waves however are shot through the slits and they diffract around the slits and superimpose destructively and constructively to create the interference pattern on the screen quantum objects have wave like properties as they go through the slits and diffract and superimpose within the region beyond the slit but the moment they touch the screen they regain their particle properties the meat and potatoes of modern quantum theory is the fact that we have quantum particles or matter waves which do wave like stuff like superimpose and these quantum particles are heavily dependent on the ideas of probability and determinism Okay, so now that we have our quantum particle, we need a way to describe what it is and how it evolves over time. To do this, we use the idea of wave function, which is a description and gives the quantum particle a degree of freedom. This degree of freedom, however, means that when we want to measure a, qu a quantity like position and momentum, we do so with a certain probability. And this is given by the probability amplitude. So the way we describe how the wave function evolves over time is to use the Schrodinger equation. The Schrodinger equation is, is analogous to Newton's second law in which that we have a way to see how the kinetic energy is changing, i.e. What it's, what it's doing while moving and the potential energy, i.e. where it is exactly. So before we get into the nitty gritty of this idea of determinism, uh, let's have a quick recap. So we have quantum particles that exhibit wave particle duality, which means they can do particle like stuff and they can do wave like stuff. This is the linchpin of today's uh, quantum computing. But the wave like nature of quantum particles leads to certain consequences. So one of the most important fundamental equations in our universe is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And the definition of this, uh, this equation is that it is not possible to simultaneously determine both the position and momentum of an object with exact position. We have delta x which is position and delta p which is momentum. If I measure the position of a quantum particle with exact position, I lose my ability to measure the momentum accurately. So to get a better understanding of this, let's consider again the hydrogen atom. Now normally we think of orbitals, an electron travelling around the atom, the nucleus in an orbital. It's bound in the orbit, so therefore it should have linear momentum, a small linear momentum, otherwise it would escape. So delta P tends to zero. But because we accurately know the electron's momentum, the uncertainty principle says that we lose information about its position. So its orbit is no longer clear, it becomes fuzzy. So because we don't exactly know where the electron is, it's spread all over the atom like a cloud. Now this isn't a bad thing, it's a degree of freedom and we can temper this by using the wave function to predict where it could be around the nucleus or in the atom. So let's first of all talk about our conventional way of computing which is based on the bit, a binary variable that can be interpreted as 1 or 0. Up, down, yes, no, on, off. 8 bits make up a byte. And the bit is quite rigid, it can only perform one calculation at a time. Conversely, we have the qubit for quantum computing which is a superposition of basis states which have more degrees of freedom. 
the physical representation of a qubit is the block sphere. Now the block sphere basically describes how you can get a qubit from two basis states which are also zero and ones, up down. Now the actual qubit state can be a smooth mix of zeros and ones because the block sphere says that you can superimpose both states with a certain probability. So let's have a look at this block sphere in more detail. I can either be fully up or I can be fully down. Or I can have some combination of both which is representative of the superposition of the basis states. Let's visualize these superpositions using coins. Let's use this particular state as an example, knowing full well that the qubit needs to exist so the total probability amplitude needs to be equal to 1. I have ascribed 3 fifths probability to be an up, 4 fifths probability to be in down. The limitless possibilities and arrangements for superimposed states means that we can have very powerful and very fast computing.